Hi, I'm Dr. Tala and I've been a neonatologist for 17 years and today I'm going to go over seven things that you should be doing if you have a baby with a pulmonary hemorrhage. One, suction the endotracheal tube. If there are big clots or a big glob of blood in there, then you're never going to be able to get gas exchange. So gently suction the endotracheal tube to make sure that it's patent. Do not take the endotracheal tube out because if it comes out, you'll lose the positive pressure and the blood will come gushing out. So avoid taking the endotracheal tube out. Just keep suctioning it as you need to. Two, raise the positive end expiratory pressure of the machine that you're on. So whatever peep you're on, go up a little bit. You could go up to a peep of six, eight, sometimes on the jet, we even go up to a peep of 10. If you really are still having issues tamponading it, then consider high frequency machine. For example, the oscillator, which has a much higher mean airway pressure that's really tamponading the lungs. Three, you can administer medications endotracheally to try to cause vasoconstriction. The two medications we use the most are iced water or epinephrine, endotracheal epinephrine. And normally we're using about 0.5 mLs total dose, anywhere between 0.1 mL to 1 mL per kilo that you could administer down the endotracheal tube, hoping it's going to cause vasoconstriction. Cocaine is also being used, but most neonatal units don't have access to that. Four, surfactant therapy. Generally, we're using this because blood itself inactivates the surfactant. So if the baby is not being able to perform gas exchange, we're just not able to oxygenate the baby, and we know there's lots of blood in the lungs, then giving surfactant can kind of replace that surfactant that was deactivated. Generally, you only want to give surfactant if the bleeding has kind of slowed down and you're not as worried about a massive PDA. Five, volume and blood resuscitation. Obviously, if the baby is losing a lot of blood, then we need to replace that. Either you're giving normal saline boluses until you can get the emergency blood or you're giving the blood. So if the baby is really losing a lot, then you're just pushing emergency blood, maybe 10 to 15 mLs per kilo. Remember though, that you're not just losing packed red blood cells, you're also losing the proteins and the platelets and the white blood cells. So which the proteins in the platelets are also responsible for clotting. So often, if there really is a large pulmonary hemorrhage, you also want to replace with platelets, FFPs and cryo, maybe 10 to 15 mLs per kilo, depending which one you're giving. Six, general studies. Most of the time you're diagnosing the pulmonary hemorrhage just on physical exam, and you also want to get a chest x-ray to see how bad the lungs look. You should also be sending labs. So send a CBC, check the platelets, send a PT, PTT, and fibrinogen. If the baby's bleeding a lot, don't wait for those to come back before you replace. Also, you should be following the electrolytes. And if you are worried about sepsis, which you should be, because that could be the cause of the pulmonary hemorrhage, then send a blood culture as well. A metabolic issue can also cause a pulmonary hemorrhage, so consider sending an ammonia. More and more, a bedside ultrasound is being used to make emergent diagnoses, so if you have access to that, then, or somebody that knows how to use it well, then you can make a good diagnosis based on the ultrasound. If you are worried about a whopping PDA, then obviously get an echo. So lots of various diagnostic tests. And seven, probably the most important, provide all the supportive care that the baby needs. If the baby really is uh, having a lot of blood coming out, make sure you make the baby NPO, provide the fluids and the nutrition that the baby needs. Adjust the breathing support like you should. Replace, like we said, the blood products that the baby has lost. Treat the hypertension with fluids and inotropes as needed. Generally do whatever you can to try to get this baby through this until you can actually stop the bleeding. I hope that was helpful. Go watch the full video on pulmonary hemorrhages if you want like a little bit more detail about everything. Thank you again for being here.